Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. This is an update that I am excited to be delivering as we had such huge news yesterday. And since then, we've had a lot of news come out that is kind of confirming what we're looking at for Ethereum in regards to not only the Ethereum USD chart, but probably more importantly, ETH BTC and ETH dominance. Of course, yesterday, BlackRock actually came out and announced that they were going to create a fund with Securitize. And I'll be doing a video later on this evening talking about who Securitize are partnered with in the crypto space and who they're actually using to essentially facilitate a crypto fund, a tokenized fund. Now, Larry Fink has previously came out and said this is the way he sees the world moving. Everything is going to be tokenized. If you follow his channel, you'll know that's very much the case. And it's very interesting that they're choosing to do this on Ethereum for now. I think there'll be many others. And I think this is where Chainlink CCIP and things like this fit into the crypto space as we have kind of moved towards this interoperable world where things aren't siloed and everything interconnects. Um, but we're really going to be exploring that in this video. First of all, we're going to be looking at the news. We'll be looking at the actual Ethereum address. It's very interesting whenever you get these addresses announced publicly, because remember, this is a public distributed ledger. You always get people sending meme coins to it. You know, they did it to Vitalik Buterin ages ago. They sent him a load of Shiba Inu that's worth a hell of a lot of money. I think he gave quite a bit of it away to charity. Goldman Sachs also weighing in on all of this and talking about the future of tokenization on public blockchains, not private. Um, and then we've got some ETF news. We'll be looking at the Ethereum chart. Of course, we'll be looking at ETH BTC and ETH dominance, which we're expecting upside for. And there is going to be technical news or there is, sorry, going to be fundamental news that's backing up what we're technically looking at. Um, and that is going to be likely in the form of an ETF and also what we're seeing happening right now. It's interesting that Ethereum BTC is actually at support and this news broke right when it was at support, kind of pushing it up. The technicals are always an early signal to what's coming fundamentally. It's why we champion them. So let's start the video off. If you're new to this channel and you're finding yourself on my videos for the first time, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we do drop an update just like this one every single day around 1 p.m. UK time. But this was the news that broke yesterday on the 19th of March. It was late on the 19th of March, actually, so late uh, yesterday, and we're covering it today. BlackRock creates fund with Securitize, a big player in real world asset tokenization. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, we're going to go over to the interview in just a second, said in an interview earlier that the companies filing for a spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF were stepping stones towards tokenization. Very interesting. Investment management giant BlackRock BLK has created a fund called the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund, according to a document filed with the US Exchange and Securities Commission, the SEC. I've said that back to front. That's the dyslexic in me trying to come out. Uh, the fund incorporated in the British Virgin Isles will be launched in the partnership with asset tokenization firm Securitize. It then goes on to say, um, observed, pointed to blockchain data showing $100 million of Circles USDC stablecoin on the Ethereum network was moved to an address related to Securitizer's deployer, which could potentially be the seed investment into the fund through, uh, although not certain. So this isn't actually been official, the $100 million, but it looks very likely. This is the wallet address. Um, you can see it over here. Well, I won't bother leaving a link to this in the description. You can kind of see it here. You can see the balance is uh, just shy. There'll be fees associated, so just shy of $100 million. Um, and you can see all the people spamming mean coins. You've got Shiba in there. You've got uh, whatever he knew, you know, Pepe, all kinds of coins that people have sent. They did the same thing with Vitalik, but you can see the kind of transfer all at the same time around this news. Um, and you can see what they've actually titled the address. Um, you know, very, very interesting. Um, so this is a huge step and we know that everything is going to move towards tokenization. What I want to do now is actually play a clip or intervene with a clip of Larry Fink actually talking about this in more detail, um, kind of hinting at this all. He's already previously done that. Um, but then we'll move on to some news from Goldman Sachs that talk about the future of public blockchains. Very, very interesting. And then we'll be diving over to some charts, uh, talking a little bit about the ETH. Uh, ETF, which is coming. It might not be May, um, but I do think it is on the horizon. And we believe it's so important to be anticipating the next move. I would also say on the, on the beginnings of, um, of a ETF Bitcoin, we believe ETFs are a technology no different than Bitcoin was a technology for, for asset storage. 
We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we could customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, if, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they could vote their own share. Extremely interesting. Now, he has previously expressed this opinion previously, um, but they're now actually moving towards it and they're looking to do that on the Ethereum blockchain by the looks of it. Uh, they're also looking to uh, use Securitize, which is partnered with a couple of really interesting crypto projects that we'll be talking about in this evening's video. Goldman Sachs also over the past 24 hours in the news, a little bit earlier on. Goldman Sachs, head of digital assets, the future is on public blockchain, so not private ones, things like Ethereum. Between, I mean, it's interesting. I'm, I, I'm debating whether to do a full video on this. I'm seeing a lot of really interesting things. So not only am I bullish on Ethereum, I'm also very bullish on the ETH uh, BTC chart and, of course, ETH DOM. I'm also looking at some layer twos and thinking, wow, these are really setting up for some serious upside. There's huge opportunities in the crypto space, guys. You've just got to not get shaken out with the volatility and be willing to... Um, Steer the course, uh, I guess. Um, so, uh, but Goldman's Matthew McDermott says the banks want to see public blockchain maturity before expanding into this arena. So this is all very interesting. Um, these guys are already dabbling in it. So remember Goldman Sachs, obviously headed by Jamie Dimon, who just thinks that blockchain or Bitcoin probably most specifically is just used for criminal activity. Sticking on the topic of Ethereum, before we come over to uh, a little bit of news in regards to um, Bitcoin, we'll look at the Bitcoin chart. You can see this is one of the uh, crypto uh, analyzers who's kind of weighing in on the ETF. Now you do have three ETFs that have deadlines for today and tomorrow. Uh, Vanek, 21 shares and Hashdex and Grayscale are all due for delays in the next 12 days. It's very likely. Um, he's also saying that his cautiously optimistic attitude on the ETH ETFs have changed from recent months. We now believe it will ultimately be denied on the 23rd of May. For this round, the SEC hasn't engaged with issuers on Ethereum specifics, the exact opposite of Bitcoin. Um, and I am confident, exceptionally confident, that you are going to get an ETH ETF. And I think that most notably comes from being a technical analyzer and looking at a pattern that is setting up for a mammoth upside. We're not going to drive targets in this video, but we will do videos as we get closer that will support it. Isn't it interesting how you found support here at what you would expect to act as support? And this all came back on the fundamental news. This is going to set up a monumental, uh, monumental upside, which is going to mean Ethereum is going to gain some significant ground against Bitcoin. Also, you're seeing the same thing with ETH dominance. So when it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. The ETH chart is looking superb. Um, it really is. This is healthy. I'd like to, to have pulled back a little bit sooner and set up a bit of a head and shoulders that we could have predicted targets for. Um, but if you do end up just very roughly... You know, you could be looking at like a 15k ETH price this cycle, maybe. I'm doing it roughly. We're not going to give a price prediction here. Um, but this is huge news, and this is the way everything is going. Despite what they try and say to you, or they try and put out through the media, you know, the reality is that this technology is changing the world, not just from a financial point of view, from a social point of view, from an infrastructure point of view, from a everything point of view, identities. You know, we, we, we had the brilliant opportunity of uh, interviewing Kilt Protocol last week. Um, to talk about how Deloitte are using DIDs, digital identities that are built on blockchains. You know, this, 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 this technology is changing everything and, and there's such an amazing opportunity right here, right now. It's why when we have volatility like we've seen over the past couple of days, of course, Bitcoin's long due a pullback, doing what things do around key levels of significance, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. 
you know, you need to just hang in there and understand the bigger trend. And we try and help people to do that on this channel. It's a, it's a great opportunity. And I don't think you should look a gift horse in the mouth. Talking about Bitcoin, it's quite a significant day in regards to economic news. I think you've got the Fed speaking today. Bitcoin's doing what it should be doing at all time highs, and that's pulling back and potentially looking to set up for broader continuation. Now, we know that Bitcoin's going to 151K, or certainly we think it is. We think that's supported largely by the macro. Um, you've got a very strong dollar that's been darkening the door of Bitcoin, rather interestingly. You know, you can see where the dollar's picked its feet up here. And Bitcoin, of course, on the upper. This is still the story. We have a broader thesis on the dollar and this what's going to drive global liquidity being the Fed. Remember, we're bullish on bonds. Which means bearish on yields, which means technically bearish on the dollar. And also we think the Fed's going to step in. And why why we're bullish on bonds is because we think there's going to be a narrative there that is going to see the Fed step in. So very interesting video. Super, super huge news in regards to BlackRock. They're actually now looking to tokenize and they've, they've kind of, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me tokenizing on Ethereum because of the fees. Certainly when you talk about kind of micro fees, but I guess institutionally they, they, they kind of are going to charge those fees anyway. Um, they'll just add a, add a cut on top of it. They'll just pass it on to, 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 to the people that they facilitate the fund for. Um, but I don't think it's just going to be on Ethereum. I think it'll be Ethereum layer twos that they'll utilize to mitigate the fees. And I think they'll look to extend to broader blockchains. And once we have this interconnected uh, world, you know, there's going to be a lot more choice available. What they're going for, like what Goldman Sachs said, is tried and tested. They're not going to go for the new kid on the block. Um, and we did a video on Solana, actually, even though Solana is an unreliable blockchain, I would say, that's my own opinion. You know, and I, I, I derive that from how often the chain goes down. We've said it's going to do very well in terms of price because it's status. It's the third largest altcoin outside of a Bitcoin and Ethereum in the uh, most funds, most indexes. Um, you know, they, they, they want tried and tested. But it, it, it's very interesting. Things are heating up. Don't steer away from the course, ladies and gentlemen. If we look at BLX, which is the Brave New Liquid Coin Index, not BlackRock stock. What are we, a month away from the halvening? Very exciting times, you know, great opportunities ahead of us. Uh, and I hope you're all on board and, 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 and ready to be taking advantage um, of all of that. So that's really all I've got for you guys. If you've enjoyed this content, a like is always appreciated. So as a comment, we'll see you in this evening's video. Always a pleasure and I'll catch you in the next one.